Hello and welcome to another episode of Feed the Beast. Now just at the end of the last episode, One Furious Scott came to join us in the server, so he and I went adventuring a little bit to see what was around the area. And we found quite a few goodies, but unfortunately we ran out of space and I wasn't able to take all of it back. But I have an idea of how to do that. But unfortunately I need some invar ingots, which means I need to go mining for them. Which again I've got a good idea and a way to help with that. So I'm going to make some backpacks here. From forestry, I believe. Yep, there's the miner's backpack and the digger's backpack. So we've got some wool, a chest, some iron, and some string. And I've got some cotton here to be able to make the wool. Make a few of these. and some string so we can get a miner's backpack and get a chest as well I'm going for three bags overall so I'll get one of these miner bags and I'll try and get two of these digger bags Take some smooth stone. Now, hold on, hold on. That's string. Now, these bags are rather handy for mining. So, we we'll get some ore here and some cobble. If we were to pick this up off the ground, ah. Lovely company. Let me just take care of this and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've no idea how they really get in. I've never actually seen that mob before until a recent update. But I've taken care of them so it should be fine for talking now. As I was saying, these miner's backpack and digger's backpack, if we were to pick some ores off the ground, it would automatically be picked up into the miner's backpack for the ores. And for the diggers back back we pick up the likes of cobblestone and dirt. However they've got a second feature. If you shift right click you can lock it off altogether so they're unused. Or you can shift right click again to pick up only mode and shift right click to supply mode. What supply mode does is if you keep a stack of cobblestone inventory and throw it half a stack it will fill up your inventory first and then put the remainder in the backpack. And if you were to start to use this, it will actually resupply the stack you have from the backpack. So this will be quite handy for us to go mining with. So that's what I'm going to do. Alright guys, I'm just back from mining and I thought to show you a handy trick with the bag. Now you could right click in the bag and just take the ores from your inventory, put them in a chest and do it your normal business. Or you could shift right click with the bag on a chest and it will completely empty the inventory into the chest. So you can see it will take some tanzanite and redstone here, put it back in the bag and if I shift right click it's back in the bag, in the chest. Just thought I'd share it with you. Okay so I've been away mining and I've come back with five fire swords, I've found four wells away. I also discovered I did actually have some ingots I'd processed earlier so I'm planning to make some in the bar. And to make that, we need to uh, make it into a blend. The blend is one pulverized first metal and two iron. So I'm going to pulverize this up and disable the output here. I'll process some as first ore and I'll be back with you in a second. Okay, so I've just pulverized that ferrous and some iron as well. And the two main uses to get some invar, I'll just get this cooking just now. The two main uses for an invar ingot that's appropriate to me right now would be for a strong box, which is my main use just now, and later on I'll be getting to the portable tank. So I'm going to take these ingots over to the crafting table, get myself a chest, and I'll refresh my memory of the recipe here. Now, you can make a regular uh, strong box with just tin, 
but I'll show you why we don't really want to do that. And that's just got a tiny inventory. And to pick it up, we'll use a crescent hammer. Or shift right click. And we can upgrade this to a hardened box with some environing gates. Which is a fair size inventory, so it's handy for what we want. And it's really useful for the fact that they can actually maintain its inventory. Once it's in inventory, you hold shift and it will show you its contents being 6 coal, 5 sticks. So it'll be handy for us to go ahead and get all the items we're needing. So, through portal we go. And I found a desert temple. So I'm going to go dip around and collect my things and store them in this chest here. I'll be back in a minute. Also while exploring we managed to find a total of 5 villages as well as these structures which gave me the portal gun, a whole lot of taint and if you managed to catch my previous episode with me and one for you Scott derping around a little bit you'll notice we found a stronghold just in a ravine next to my original base. We also managed to find a desert, uh, desert temple and a jungle temple although I have lost footage for that. And in the stronghold we also managed to find a zombie spawner which is quite lucky. So we've also added Soul Shards 2 to the server, so you'll see some of that soon. And one of my favourite loot is the Portal Gun. I have 8 more Envaring Gits, so I'm planning to put them to some good use. First of all, I'm going to upgrade this Gladstone Energy Cell. And as you can see currently it can hold 400,000 output to 80 and input 80. I'm going to upgrade that to a hardened energy cell. It should retain its charge with 2 million charge and hmm should be 600 and out but it says 80 Let's see yeah, that's currently at 80 but it can go up to 400 for now though hmm 100 should be fine The next job I was going to do is to make a portable tank. Now the basic portable tank can hold 8 in the buckets, but the hardened can hold 16, so I'm hoping to go to the hardened, so I can either craft the portable and then upgrade it to a hardened, like this, or I can just go straight to the hardened, so I'll go straight to the hardened if I get a bit of copper. My plan for that is that I'm planning to go into Tinker's Construct which basically has a smeltery that runs off of lava. So I'm going to go make some tools for that just now. First off you're going to need quite a few stencils, so I'll make a few of them just now. I did actually go and hunt through the villages and get a fair bit of here. My plan is to get some obsidian, so my plan right now is to smelt down this obsidian tools that I have here. Although if you're trying to get obsidian without this, I would recommend either the Terrain Smasher or a Igneous Extruder which takes liquid lava and liquid water and combines them inside of the block. So it's basically like a cobblestone generator except in a block form. So to start out, I believe the first one I tried to need to make is a stencil table. So I'm going to take a plank, take the stencil, you'll notice I've got another book here. There's three books in total and you'll get them as you each reach, uh, reach each stage of it. This is your weapons and how you can make them. As well as the ability of the items and cobalt and all up to cobalt. And my goal is my is manulum which is an alloy of the mix of cobalt and ardite. There's also modifiers. Oh, the first not here. To get cobalt and ardite we will need something with a mining level of that or higher. Cobalt's mining level is actually higher than diamond, so we'll need something with a mining level of 4 or higher, so 4 being cobalt here, which is cobalt itself, ardite, which is cobalt as well, 
and manulum, so we need to get these first before we can use them. So the one to go for, I believe, would be alumite, which is an alloy as well, which requires. I'm sure we'll get this in a further week once we get the smeltery going, but it requires some obsidian. So why don't I go smelting up some of this? Uh, things required for a smeltery, which is grout. So you combine clay, gravel, sand, get grout, which gives you the ricks. So I haven't have enough of that to do it just now. So why don't I go ahead and make that up just now? And here's the seared bricks we require. And you should see as soon as I create the seared brick brick block, I should get another book. This book should tell you the details of the alloys and how to get them, which I'll go through later on, and how to build the smeltery itself, as well as the alumite which is made from five aluminum, two iron and two obsidian. So our next task is to get obsidian. I want to make the smeltery to melt down the obsidian I have to try and get some. To do that I'm going to need some lava, so while this processes I'm going to go get some lava and put it in this portable tank. So here I found a nice pool of lava, so I'm going to put my portable tank down and there is no actual gauge on the portable tank to show you how much is in although Wayla can tell you to some degree um, but other than a visual gauge if you shift right click to pick it up again you can see how many buckets are in there but when it's in the world you can't. So I'm going to go and fill up this tank for a while and meet back upstairs. To build the rest of the tools uh, stations you'll need a sensor table and a log for the part builder and a chest and a stencil for the chest and finally you will need a crafting table and a stencil Now I would recommend laying it out as I'm planning to put my pallet here. I would recommend three spaces. Some recommend four. I would say put the chest in the back as you can actually get access to it from the tool station. Or no, from the part builder. And then you start with the dental table on the left and the tool station on the right. To start to build the smeltery I'm going to put a 3x3 th three three of seared brick in the middle. And then further seared bricks around the edges, one layer up and in a 5x5 five five leaving the centre hollow. The outside that the, the smeltery can actually be made of either seared glass seared window or seared bricks as well as having a drain for the output. Okay so I think I've got all the things I need together to put the smeltery in tag basically. So I'm going to start putting the smeltery controller here and I'll sear brick and I'll leave my tank here and I think I'll want I like to look in so I'll put a seared glass over here and you'll know this is activated because the smeltery controller is satellite up. Now, here's a 3x3 three three of what's literally what's in here, and it's not exactly a lot of space, so I think I'd like to immediately put this up to too high and get the immediate benefits of it. So, what I'm going to be using in the future, I'm going to put a drain there, some glass here, and a couple of drains there, and some glass over here as well. And that automatically gives us a bigger space to deal with. Now, the first thing I'd like to make is this aluminum brass which is basically what we're going to make all of our casts out of and it's three aluminum and one copper now this actually doubles your ores so if I was to put in I believe it was three aluminum so if I put in three aluminum I actually get back six so for putting in three aluminum I need to put in two copper ingots the ingots are not doubled but the ores are and it's not doing anything right now because I need to fill it with some lava 
So this is where the tank comes in. So I fill the tank with some lava and it starts melting it down. And you can see the blocks are in here and it'll soon turn into liquid once they are fully melted, which is why I like the window from over here as well. And while that's cooking up, I'm going to get the drain ready. So to get this liquid out, we we'll use faucets. Now, you only need one of these, but I'm building for later on. And something to put it in. So I'm going to put the casting table here and a basin there. Now the basin is for creating blocks. So nine then gets worth, gives you a block. And a casting basin is basically for using casts, or in this case, to create the cast on, to which you need a negative image. The first thing I recommend putting it on is an iron ingot, or any ingot of that kind for that matter, as you'll get an anti image, and then anything burnt into there will become an ingot. And you can resmelt that down later. So if you make an alloy that you like, in this case would be the aluminum brass, then you can smelt it in the ingot, store it in a chest, and melt it next time you want to make a cast for them to worry about ratios. So you see there aluminum is now melted, we're just waiting on the copper. So we've got our aluminum here, I'll come back once this is done. So we're just about done with the copper here, it'll just take a few more seconds, and this aluminum should turn into an aluminum brass. There we go, aluminum brass. If I had another ingot's worth in there, I could make a block over here. But since we've got eight, I'm going to show you how you get an ingot cast. So it'll pour out around the ingot and then harden, and then we'll get our ingot cast. So if we put the ingot cast down and then pour another liquid, we then get the cast in the ingot, and once it dries, we've got an aluminum brass ingot. Now the main use for this is basically casts, so what I'm going to do, I don't think these go in here, yeah they do actually. So what I'm going to do is make a pickaxe head cast, it's always handy to have, and I'm going to make it out of stone, it's one of the simplest thing I can do, and there we have pickaxe head pattern. <coughs> to get the image you put the pickaxe head, same as the ingot, down there, and put the aluminum brass. Once it's hardened, we've now got the pickaxe head pattern, so if we made an iron or any other material in here, we could then smelt it down to make a head pattern for Tinker's Construct. So I'm going to make some ca useful casts with this aluminum brass, and I'll be right back with you. I don't actually have any casts that are really worth making at the moment, so I'm just making them into ingots. But what I would like to do while this is happening, is to set up my portable tank, so that I can actually s start getting a supply of lava. And it will emit a little bit of light as well. So there's my fluid duct, and my present hammer. And if I attach this to there, not much really happens. The Portable tank needs to put into output mode, and you can see it filled up. So if we pick this back up, you'll see it took my original two buckets worth, and then it's taken another few buckets from here. That's how much it takes for a smelting. So I'm going to put that back. It should last for a little while. And the rest of these ingots. I think it's the last one. So here comes the moment of truth then. Can I smelt down these obsidian tools? I think I can. The next question would be, what are they worth? So I'm going to hope I get approximately two for the total of them to make the alloy. Here it is. Alamite. Alamite is made from five aluminum, two iron and two obsidian. So therefore I'm hoping to get two obsidian, it's worth, which I think each head is worth one so I should actually get three. Then I can put in my iron ingots and aluminum to make some alamite, which will be able to get us to mine the higher level of ores of obsidian and cobalt and ardite. So I'm going to let that smelt and I'll get back to you in a second. Now that's it all smelted up now and I have two ingots worth, which is just perfect. Now I will note here that if you were to smelt an uh, obsidian block, it does actually count for two ingots, so it will double your. Um, obsidian block into obsidian ingots. So since we now have the two ingots worth in here, and I believe it was a 522 for making ardite, alumite, sorry, alumite is five aluminum, two iron, and two obsidian. So if we put in a little extra here, it shouldn't matter too much because we can just basically pour out afterwards because I do believe the liquids separate. So if that was two iron, and it required five, so three of the ore should smelt down to give us an alumite. 
and you'll see here that's uh, the aluminum just finishing and the obsidian is at the bottom there and the aluminum is at the top, six things it's worth the two ingots and with this iron smelt it should make the alloy with a separate aluminum so we'll come back once this iron's done and here you'll see the iron's just finishing up so we should see hopefully a nice alloy in here there we go one ingots of molten aluminum and three ingots of alumite so I've put my pickaxe head pattern in here because that's really what I'm after just now so I'm going to pour that and it should be the al alumite and here we go an alumite pickaxe head so I'll need to think what I'm going to make the rest of this out of but for now I'd like to go put an ingot cast in here and that way I'll have the ingots for later and I can also use this to clear out the aluminum I've got left over in here and you see I've got one aluminum, which just hardens, and there we go. Nice empty smeltery for next time we need it. I also like to say that there is something else handy this can do, and if I put some glass in here, I'll let that smelt up, and I'll show you what comes out, because it actually has a different kind of texture for glass from Tinker's Construct. That's the glass now smelted up, so we've now got molten glass in here, nine blocks worth. Glass will go for block for block and it comes out with a nice little texture and you can see it now makes blocks in the basin it takes a bit longer than the casting table obviously because it does nine times the work but once it settles in a second that's the clear glass and you'll see it's got a clearer texture than normal glass and I do believe that once you break it you actually get the glass back so it's just a general all round better glass to use and it also comes with connected textures which means that any block, any clear glass connected next to the clear glass will lose the white border. So it's quite handy to have. Now I'd like to actually automate this process if I can. So once this clear glass here is done, I've got an idea of how to do that. So I'm going to get rid of this faucet and actually replace this with a fluid duct. Now, because of the new update we need some pneumatic servos to make it auto pool and now click on it you can whitelist I don't think I can do that actually hmm I think for a second I'm going to get the liquid into here okay I'm actually going to replace this with a tank just now so that I can enable this long enough to be able to get a bucket of molten liquid in here I think I actually got a few in here now and if I take this bucket, I can then. Alright, kind of do this wrong here. I'm going to get an empty hand, click on here, and if I click on there, you'll see it's molten glass and not a bucket of molten glass in the whitelist. So only molten glass will come out of this section here, and it won't have to pour into here, so I can do other smelter stuff and not worry about losing liquid, and I can pour the ingots worth of items there. So let me tie this up a little bit, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, just note you can actually just turn this backwards and it would go back in, so that was pretty handy. So what I can do now is replace this tank with a casting basin, and then I can reverse the polarity here, and it should just auto pull out. Now the next part is to get the items out. So if I go ahead and think the hopper would be the best choice here for an item, so let me go track down one of them because the hopper will pull out items and not liquid and the pipe will only put out liquid. So if I put this in here, it should auto pull the glass out and the liquid. So it's liquid through the pipe to then cool, turn into an item, and then get pulled out by the hopper. So anytime I just throw a pile of glass in here, it will automatically come out and turn into some clear glass. So a rather automated process at the moment, which I'm pretty proud of. So let me just patch this up a little bit and I'll get back to making a tool. Just quick note to say the molten glass is quite dangerous like this, it does set you on fire. Um, don't do this, it's not a great idea. Okay so I've put some thought into it and I've decided what I want to make the tool out of. But before I do that, I want to stop all this cluttering up uh, before it gets bad. I'm going to make an iron chest from an iron chest mod. The iron chest is basically iron gold diamond different levels and just basically bigger internal storage in a one block area so it means I can clear up my inventory, inventory a little bit now I'm going to make some tool rod patterns and a tool binding pattern 
here and I plan to make two rod and two binding out of iron because it gives me a bit more durability and a better modifier in the handle so this should be done in a couple of seconds um, so I'll get back with you now each of these either tool rod and tool binding each take 0.5 of a material so you get tool binding and a shard so hopefully in theory this should only cost me one ingot to make the both the tool rod and the tool casting so that's it done there and moment of truth you can see we should have 8 milli buckets 4 nuggets hmm never seen that before See what happens with it. I don't know that was enough. Yep, so that was quite good. Managed to get two rod and two rod binding out of one ingot. So now we can only come to the tool station for a part builder. And I'm going to take a pickaxe. So I'm going to take the pickaxe head, the tool material, and the stone and iron handle. I would have liked to make that out of paper. Unfortunately, I haven't found any reeds to make paper yet, so it's kind of a unfortunate situation I'm in and it can mine up to cobalt level so that'll be quite handy and I think I'm going to go and get some obsidian as soon as I can because I don't have any tool heads to smelt down anymore so I'll be back in a second I thought I'd just come back to show you the speed of this pick um, I can't remember if I really what diamonds are like so I tried to avoid making them especially mod minecraft if I can help it but I think it's a fair speed of pick uh, for obsidian anyway it takes a couple of seconds yeah, doesn't seem like a bad pick to me Again, here's another display of the speed of this pick. I'd also like to note that all Tinker Construct tools have the ability of right click on an item and it'll use the next tool, next item next to the tool. So if I place that with cobblestone and I right click, it'll put down cobblestone. But I find the torches to be a bit handier to do. So just let's share that with you. Okay, everyone, I think it's about time we wrap up this episode. Now, I think it's about time we wrap up this episode and. To continue where I left off, I'm going to go to. I think it's about time to wrap up this episode, and next time we'll be going to the nether. So, what I'm going to do just now is go ahead and build my nether portal and show you a little bit of a trick as well. So, here's my plan to build the internal of it right here. Let me just take this out a little bit. get myself a flint and steel and there we go we're on another portal for next episode now one thing I do hate about these nether portals is the constant noise you get from them so I'm going to show you a little trick on how to get rid of that so what I'm going to need to do first is to make myself a note block and surround that by wool to get the muffler from extra utilities and what this basically does is, with a certain range, it will stop all sounds being produced. So you can hear that spider there. And do believe that's... Ah, must be out of range. But you can hear now that it should have stopped the portal now. And I believe that wraps up our episode. So thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you want to see more, then please subscribe. And next episode we will be going to the nether. So thank you all for watching and goodbye.